Good evening. This is GERD Awareness Week. Joining us to talk about this today is Dr. Robert Giannotti from Albany Gastroenterology Consultants. Good evening, Dr. Giannotti. How are you? Good evening. I'm very well. Thank you. So let's start out with what is GERD? So um, thanks for having me again. Um, I, I think it's important for us to be talking about GERD because it is, after all, the week of Thanksgiving. So a lot of people suffer from reflux or what's more typically known as heartburn around Thanksgiving. So GERD actually stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease, and it's a condition that uh, often has a lot of different symptoms, so it can be confusing at times for patients to know exactly if they have GERD or not. But typically we think of GERD as uh, an abnormal condition where acid is coming from the stomach up into the esophagus, causing inflammation and damage. It can lead to a number of symptoms from typical heartburn or feeling acid coming up in the chest or into the mouth, difficulty swallowing, chest pain, and occasionally even voice hoarseness or cough. And what are the complications of GERD if left untreated? So if, if someone has GERD or acid reflux for uh, many months or years on end that goes unrecognized or untreated, sometimes they can develop uh, inflammation that causes a narrowing or a stricturing of the esophagus, and that may lead to them having difficulty swallowing. Um, in addition, one of the major concerns that we have for long-standing acid reflux is the risk that it poses for esophageal cancer. So over many years of uncontrolled acid reflux, it can lead to a uh, precancerous condition of the esophagus called Barrett's esophagus, which in turn in some patients can lead to esophageal cancer. What steps can patients take to reduce symptoms of GERD? You know, if they have been diagnosed or they think they might have it, what can they do to kind of keep it at bay? Well, I think the, the, the point that you made about it being diagnosed, I think, is one that's very important. So you really want to speak to your primary care provider or your gastroenterologist about your symptoms so that we can actually make the diagnosis because you wouldn't want to um, self-treat or self-diagnose um, without actually having a clear diagnosis. But once a, a diagnosis of acid reflux or GERD is made, I typically will uh, go through a, a list that often includes what foods potentially are triggering for patients. More commonly, foods that cause acid reflux are uh, excessive eating, particularly late at night, within three hours of bedtime, meals that are high in fat, uh, chocolate and peppermint. So again, during the holiday season, this is a time when people are eating a, a, an abnormal number of sweets and that we can often see an increase in reflux symptoms. Um, other people have different triggers. Sometimes tomato sauces or spicy foods can trigger symptoms. Um, caffeine, uh, such as coffee or tea, can trigger symptoms. Um, and uh, at times, uh, folks just have uh, no particular food trigger at all. And the reason for that is because some people are predisposed to reflux. Because as you see here, the connection between the esophagus and the stomach is what we call a sphincter or a valve. And some folks, independent of what they eat, have abnormal relaxation of that valve and no reflux uh, no matter what they're eating. Another important thing that I uh, make sure that patients understand is that not eating late at night is really key because the stomach emptying slows down. So I, I recommend that my patients try to not eat anything within three hours of bedtime. And occasionally elevation of the head of the bed with a wedge pillow or a bed that elevates on its own can be helpful. Um. What kinds of, you know, I guess first of all, what is the difference between just, cat, you know, standard heartburn and GERD? So the, the difference between standard heartburn and GERD is really twofold. First is the frequency of symptoms. It's basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, common to have heartburn symptoms with certain meals. If you're eating uh, a lot of uh, pizza and wings and you overeat, we've all experienced that uncomfortable sensation of acid reflux. But that usually is very rare and happens only intermittently. The patients that experience true GERD are patients that are having symptoms of acid reflux three or more times a week generally. And again, uh, often to diagnose GERD, we're performing an upper endoscopy. This is a sedated uh, test where with a camera scope, we go down and we take a look throughout the esophagus and into the stomach and we're able to look for signs of inflammation or what's called reflux esophagitis and signs of that precancerous condition I mentioned called Barrett's. 
And if this is diagnosed, you know, once you've gone through all this and you've seen your primary care provider and you've seen a specialist such as yourself, what type of medications or treatments are available mm -hmm. for patients? So as far as medications are concerned, there really are three groups of medicines. The first group are the antacids. Um, everyone has uh, at one point or another in their life eaten Tums or Rolaids. These are, are medications that are taken uh, for intermittent symptoms and will help with acid reflux temporarily over several minutes to an hour. Um, beyond that, there are medications that are called uh, H2 blockers. These uh, work over a longer period of time to suppress acid. These are more commonly known as Zantac or Pepsid. And again, this is typically used for patients that have intermittent symptoms. Lastly is a group of medications that are called the PPIs or proton pump inhibitors. These are uh, better known as Prilosec or Nexium. There's a fairly large group of these medicines. And these are regular medicines for patients that have significant um, GERD or complications of GERD in order to prevent it from getting worse. Um, you know, PPIs have been in the news in recent years um, linked, you know, some studies have linked them to kidney issues or to dementia. Um, are there risks with these drugs? Um, and what have you seen in your experience? Mm -hmm. So I, I will say uh, for sure, and I think this is a, an opinion held by the majority of gastroenterologists, is that for the, um, the patient that needs this drug, the benefit clearly outweighs the potential long-term risks. There is some evidence that there might be a linkage to uh, rare kidney inflammation. Um, there may also be some long-term uh, risk to uh, bone health. Um, but the reality is, is that we don't have any clear information right now as we stand in 2018 going into 2019 that these drugs actually cause any of these issues. That being said, there may be evidence in the future where we find out that there are, are more issues with these medications. So it becomes very important for us as gastroenterologists to make sure that we select the appropriate patients for long-term therapy. And no one should be taking these drugs over the counter for long periods of time without the guidance or assistance of a gastroenterologist. I, I should also mention that medications are only one potential treatment for acid reflux or GERD. There are several um, surgical interventions. One is called a Nissen fundoplication, which is a surgery that um, enhances the uh, integrity of that sphincter at the bottom of the stomach. This is um, beneficial particularly if patients have a weakness in the uh, uh, stomach wall called a hiatal hernia. And there's a newer procedure that's called the Lynx procedure, which is actually a uh, uh, magnetic beads that go around the outside of the esophagus and tighten it down to reinforce that sphincter and help prevent acid reflux from flowing back up into the esophagus. So as we wrap up and, you know, everybody's getting ready for Thanksgiving, any, any words of advice for maybe someone who is predisposed to this condition or thinks they might have it? Absolutely. Um, I'll say what I tell all my patients, it's to eat slow, take your time, enjoy the company of friends and family, not overeat, and make sure that you're waiting at least three hours before you uh, lie down and watch that football game or go to sleep um, after eating because that will definitely make your reflux worse. And as always, I tell all my patients with acid reflux or not, if you're a smoker, it really is time coming uh, to the new year for you to consider uh, once and for all trying to give that up. Because if the list wasn't long enough, smoking does unfortunately increase the risk of esophageal cancer and Barrett's esophagus in patients who have GERD. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Giannotti. We appreciate it. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone as well for me.